Whether we're talking about work, school, politics or family, it seems that toxic people are everywhere in life and dealing with them is kind of unavoidable. If we're not careful, they can really impact us in a negative way, hindering our growth, causing us stress, pain and even trauma. But how do you know it's time to cut a toxic person out of your life and instead of trying to reason and communicate, you're better off just walking away and removing them from the equation altogether. In this video, I'm going to share the six telltale signs to help you in making your decision. So keep watching. First off, I think we need to stop referring to them as toxic people and instead refer to them as people with toxic behavior patterns. Why? Because I think it's important to criticize the behaviors and not the person. In her book, Daring Greatly, Brene Brown talks about how when we shame someone, we render them invisible and unseen, which can be really damaging. Shaming a person happens when we say that they, as a person, are wrong. We're leaving them with no room or opportunity for redemption and growth and basically othering them, which even if they are behaving in a toxic or unhealthy way towards you, you can still maintain a healthy and compassionate response. So instead, I encourage you to focus on identifying their behaviors as wrong because it focuses on their actions and thereby maintaining their humanity. Hate the sin and not the sinner. So sign number one is that you talk about them a lot in a negative way. Maybe you're talking to your coworkers or colleagues about how your boss was rude to you or you're WhatsApping your family members long essays over the phone detailing how their toxic behaviors have been affecting you. Either way, a decent or significant portion of your time is spent on thinking and talking about them. This gives them more power over your life because what we focus on grows. In this case, maybe you've tried to reason or dialogue with them, but it's just not working. So you're spending a lot of your time thinking and just basically cursing the darkness that is still in your life. The second sign is you lose control of your emotions and your temper. I know firsthand how hard it can be to be around someone whose behavior towards you and others is toxic. And a clear sign for me is it always stirs up really strong and powerful emotions inside me. Emotion is first expressed in our bodies, in our physiology, and even in thinking about this person and the things that they've said or they've done, it doesn't matter if they're in the room with you or not. You might notice that it makes you clench your jaw or you start clenching your fists and you suddenly get really angry. It's important to note here as well that losing your temper can be seen in various forms. Anger, like any emotion, exists on a spectrum and it can manifest as indignation for the injustice that you feel or it could be a chronic sense of frustration that builds up over time but never really reaches boiling point. Either way, this person's behaviors have unfortunately got the best of you and you have a hard time in controlling and holding those emotions back. It costs you a lot of energy. The third sign is you experience a loss of confidence and self-esteem. Individuals stuck in toxic behavior patterns are often rude, insulting or downright degrading. A good example that I've experienced in the past was an ex who constantly belittled me poured doubt on my dreams and just basically negatively impacted my confidence and self-esteem. Her behaviors made me feel like I always needed to justify things that I normally wouldn't and I'd often lose confidence in myself, my work and be constantly second guessing my every move. Now it's normal and healthy to be challenged by your significant other but if like me it's veering you into a place of low self-esteem and confidence and you never asked for that, where you can't even talk about your hopes for your life with them, that is a huge red flag. People's energies don't lie and when their actions show you who they are, believe them. Sign number four is you dread or avoid spending time with them. If and when you find yourself feeling a sense of dread or finding excuses not to spend time with them, that's another big clue. Again, ask yourself, introspect, what is going on here? Why do I have this response? What is it about this relationship that's making me feel this way? It's only natural that if most of your interactions with another person are negative, 
you're going to start pulling away and withdrawing, whether consciously or otherwise. And that could be mentally being very distant or disinterested when you're around them, or it could be finding excuses and ways to avoid them entirely. But if this is you and your relationship with that person, it's another signal. The fifth sign is you respond negatively to this relationship with unhealthy coping mechanisms. This could be a number of different things, drinking more and using different substances to numb yourself off or distract yourself. Or it could be other things that are less noticeable, like food, gaming, social media and TV. Again, this is another big clue that maybe you're not just procrastinating and binging on your favorite Netflix show, but you're using that as an unhealthy distraction and coping mechanism to make the pain go away. When unfortunately, it's not. It's only gonna make you feel worse in the long run. It's gonna give you short-term relief, yes, but not long-term healing. Now, before I go on to our last and most important sign, I wanna say a special thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. It's a great place for you to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and just get lost in your creativity. Since I just moved house and I literally have no more money left to give anyone any Christmas gifts, I've been thinking about how I can create something personal, free and unique for all my loved ones this year. So to help me on my quest to be a Kanjus Gujarati man, this week I've been taking part in Carly Kuhn's Skillshare class called Explore Your Creativity, Create a Playful Personal Greeting Card. Not only is it a great fit for me, but it's only 34 minutes in length. I managed to get through it in double speed in a single sitting. The rest of my time actually went into making my works of art, there's a lot of trial and error. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes like this. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription and the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click on the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Besides making these personal cards, I think a Skillshare membership is also a great one-of-a-kind gift to give your family this Christmas, so feel free to share the link down below with them as well. Now, the final sign and one that I am always conscious of within myself is passing the pain on. You see, pain that isn't transformed is most often transmitted, leading you to bleed on people that never cut you in the first place. There's a number of different ways you might see this happening in your life. Maybe you're arguing with your spouse a little bit more, or you're having outbursts of anger more often over tiny little things. Maybe you're being a bit more irritable with people as you go about your day, but somewhere in your life, if you see the pain seeping out onto others and you know it's because of that toxic relationship, that's another clue. It's well known, for example, that children who have witnessed or experienced various forms of abusive behavior in their lives can often go on to mimic and relive those patterns in adulthood. So there are the six signs, fixating on them a lot, losing control of your emotions and temper, seeing a loss of confidence and self-esteem, avoiding or dreading spending time with them, resorting to unhealthy coping mechanisms and passing the pain on. This is by no means a complete list. I kept it short and sweet because it is a YouTube video and I think these ideas are good clues on your journey. That's the most important part. You've got to look at the overall ecology and environment and context of your specific situation. But tell me in the comments down below, you know, would there be things that you would add? What have been your specific experiences? This topic of dealing with toxic behaviors in other people is one that requires so much introspection, patience and understanding both of others and ourselves. And one thing that I remind myself is for me, it's always a last resort to cut someone else off. I always wanna try and engage in healthy dialogue and compromise where possible because it's really important. But I always wanna balance my empathy for that person and understanding well, what made them behave in this way, what's going on in their psychology and in their lives. But also balancing that with a love for myself and my boundaries. So that said, don't make the mistake that I have in the past. Just because you can explain the other person's behavior that doesn't mean you should excuse it. A sign of 
other people's emotional maturity and our own is taking ownership over our actions and having the self-awareness to own up, apologize where necessary and make changes. But if someone is consistently failing to do that and it's causing you hurt or harm, it's just not worth it. There are so many wonderful, kind, compassionate and loving people out there. I'd rather you and I pour our energy into those relationships and those people who fuel and fan your flames. I really hope this video has helped you. I'd love to talk more in the comments, so please do share your thoughts. If you enjoy this video, click here to enjoy my other video about toxic people and relationships. And make sure you subscribe and turn the bell notifications on so you know when new videos like this come out. Stay safe and be well, my friends.